All right, let's, let's take a look at it. So we have three setups. And like I said, we're releasing the SIM scalper on Monday with the PDF. So just heads up on that. That has all these three setups in it also. But there's three setups in the trade room. We have a zone break. We have a, fit, a outer edge setup, or slingshot. And then we have a failure trade. Let's go over them briefly in this video so we understand, and we're gonna see what, the, uh, what our algorithm looks for these setups on any given market any given day so zone break is a specific time to look for a zone break a specific time to look for an outer edge slingshot and a specific time to look for a failure trade so a zone break is specifically used when market profile levels are broken out of so this is high value area a couple days ago and i'll go to yesterday and i'll go to today's trading and let's look at these setups this is high value area on market profile. You have an HVA, an LV, and a control point. HVA is the red volume profile. Volume profile has been around since 1994. All right, that's high value area. When you close outside of high value area, meaning the outside of it, the market becomes what's called imbalanced. When you become imbalanced, there's no resistance above you until the next previous market profile, which is the previous day or usually two days before. Our target yesterday that I gave at 8.15 a.m., I said this is our target for the morning. It came within one tick of our target. I'm going to show you how it works. So high value area, we break, when we get above high value, you, you want to look for these zone breaks. Zone breaks, you want to only trade those in an imbalanced market. An imbalanced market is described, or the definition of it is, when you're above high value area or you're below low value area. When you're above high value area, you're going to look to buy high and sell higher. Buy high and sell higher. Buy high sell higher and buy high sell higher that's totally counterintuitive of what you're taught so you're taught in educational books and rooms and everything else to buy low sell high well that's counter trend trading the market when in actuality the reason this works so felt well be when you get above high value area you're catching buy stops because if you have all these resting sell orders that are at these high value areas or at these levels where these these the counter trend traders are trying to counter trend trade this move down they got taken out they try to counter this trade down they got taken out the counter trend traders keep trying to use all these different oscillators divergence mac rsi all this stuff to fade the market and that's how they get run over when what you need to do, how we educate traders, is you need to buy high, sell higher in an imbalanced market. So that's called a zone break. The second trade setup that happens, well, there's only three setups you need to look for according to our methodology on a daily basis. The second one is an outer edge trade. An outer edge trade happens, we have these zones that's been tested over 30 years with an artificial intelligence program. So we know it's the best zones in the S&P over the last 30 years that these zones like to repel price if you come to the outer edge of it. So these zones not only tell us our trend in the market, that if it's green, we're net buyers. If it's red, we're net sellers. So if it's green, we're looking for zone break buys above market profile or below for zone breaks. If it's green also, we like, we like to let price get outside of the outer edge of it. That's what we call an outer edge slingshot. And then close back inside of it, and this yellow candle will automatically form. If you have your speakers on your computer, if you have the algorithm, it will um, give you an alert on your speakers. It'll alert you with the beep that we have an outer edge trade. 
Well, an outer edge trade, you're trying to get the outer edge part of a zone that's been tested for over 30 years to repel price back up. Because what happens, I call it a slingshot, because imagine you taking your left hand and putting up here at price and stretching it with your right hand, a rubber band, stretching it down with trend, stretch, 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 and then all of a sudden you let go of that rubber band. The target on that rubber band would go what? It would repel right back to the, the, or, the origin, and price should come right back up to it, which it does. And you notice on that slingshot that happened, it went exactly right back up to it within one tick, exceed it by one tick. So that's your first overall target on a slingshot. Where, where's the swing high, the retrace that started from? On the outer edge, it should snap back right up to it. So that's called an outer edge trade. All right, that's our second setup in the trade room. The third setup is called a failure trade. The failure trade is against overall trend. This is where this fires automatically for you, and you have an, this bar that will form. If the oscillator down here, this is strictly oscillator based. If the market is weakening up against my overall trend, then my oscillator will stay above what's called 65. You can use a stochastic or, or a CCI or whatever you want to use. And you're looking for a retracement there, and that's called a failure trade. All right, so that is a failure trade. So you can use the failure trades to find the overall inflection point in the market on the way back down. So this morning on the 7th, or yesterday, uh, non-farm payrolls came out. We're going to let it sell down in a second, and then we're going to get back to work. If you look at the sixth, what happened is, let's take a look at what happened in the market. I just showed you what happened the day before. With When the market got marked up, right? So skinny this down. We got above HVA. We had a zone breakout. We had a zone breakout, a zone breakout, zone breakout, and a zone breakout. That's when the market became imbalanced. Then what we did after that is we had a failure trade, and then we had going into an outer edge setup. We went right into an outer edge setup, and from the outer edge setup, we went right into it. So you had a Outer, I mean, a zone break, 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 because the market's above, market profile. We're right into a failure, right into an outer edge, right into a zone break at resistance. This is on market profile. That's why it never fall through. And then we had a failure trade. And now this morning, going into today's action, with non-farm payroll, we can see today's action, it's fast right now with the overall market moving. Let me get this off this yesterday profile. You can see that right after news, we had a zone break at this level. Another zone break, zone break, zone break. So th those are three of the levels. Now, what you want to do is this, and I'm going to show you today's pocket in the market we're going to look to trade. I got a huge hole in the market right here if we break 45. Yesterday at 8.15 in the morning at this level, where was it, 8.15, at this level, I projected this low as a target. It stopped within one tick. So at this level, I projected this low. How did I do that? How did I project that low? Because what I'm using is I'm using market profile. These profile levels are two to four hour rotating profiles. This is not your standard amateur 30 minute market profile like a lot of traders use. A lot of traders use 30 minute market profiles and over the last 39 years, they're just not accurate enough to find out where the big inflection points are. So I like to use a two to four hour profile that rotates. And what it does, it lets me know where these big gaps in the market are. So not only can I look for zone breaks when I get below low value area like this, so when we broke low value area yesterday again, here, we had my zone breaks into an imbalanced market that got us short. And you guys took advantage of this. On the way down, we had a couple zone breaks in here. 
went right down to my target. After I hit my target, I got the failure trades that hit that rocketed this thing. Two failure trades rocked this thing all the way back up. So my zone breaks actually had a failure trade here that, that moved down, moved the market down right here also. So it started with the failure trade here. Failure started moving the market down. Then I got into an imbalanced market below low value area. I got a zone break, zone break. Hit my target hit within one tick. Then I got a failure trade, rocking the market back up. Because what I did is I, how did I come up with these targets? I used my two to four hour profiles and I just simply looked for this. I looked at my previous day market profile. My previous market profile said we are balanced until we break out a profile. When we broke out of here to an imbalanced market, that's when you saw those zone breaks I just showed you that worked out great on my system because there's no resistance until the next profile. So if I skinny this down, I can see where my hole in the market is. My hole in the market was a retracement to this profile level. It stopped within one tick yesterday. So I knew six hours before, six hours ahead of time where this break was. Now I'm coming into the hole again right now. I'm coming in at 45 breaks. So what am I going to look for? I'm going to look for a zone break. So I'm going to look for this market to break these zones down here. So when I get a zone break at 39 a quarter, I'm looking for this market to be filled. I'm looking for this pocket to be filled. I got a big pocket now. I got a huge pocket below me that tells me I have no underlying resistance if I can close a body of the candle close below here. Now right now it's straddling it. See this big wick? Wick is where amateur traders get caught on thinking it's a breakdown yet. Not a breakdown yet. That's a wick. We're going to look at the body of the candle. We're going to look at the open versus close. So what I'm going to do is like I did yesterday, is I'm going to see when this body starts closing or even when it's getting away from profile for some zone break. So we'll watch for, the, for zone break. If I don't get a zone break, then I'll look for an outer edge setup to come up here in this retest, a profile that broke down at 54 and a half. So I got two setups coming up right now. I got two setups that's going to come up right now on this system. I got one after news. I got a zone break that's going to happen right here. I got a big heads up when it's going to happen. I'm in an imbalance market. So if I break 39, is that going to keep me below this imbalanced area? Yes, because the imbalance area is at 45. So I'm going to mark 45 down as my market profile level right now. I'm going to know that 45 is my level. 45 is my level. That's my breakdown on market profile. So I know I'm below profile. You can see it happen right after news, 42 and a quarter down to 39, three and a quarter points. But that was right after news. You don't want to trade right after news. It's too fast. But I'm looking for a break here because if I break here, I know I'm below high, high value area. I mean low value area, sorry, LVA this time. So low value area, it tells me I'm in an imbalanced market. So if I'm in an imbalanced market this morning, I know that I am going to look to short the market. So I'm going to look to do two things. I'm going to look to short this market with a zone break here. It's a leading indicator. It's not lagging. I'm going to look to zone break short. Target of 15. My target is 15 two days ago with my control point. The other one, if it likes to rally, that's fine. Go ahead and rally. That's okay. Then I'll look for a outer edge setup, outer edge slingshot, outer edge sling at this level up here. So I'm not going to look for a failure trade because failure is against trend and my oscillator is really weak. For a failure trade, that market would have to do this. It would have to get above my 100, the oscillator, get back below 100, then get back above 100 again, then I have a failure trade. So right now I don't have a failure trade. So I'm looking for three setups, failures off the board. A failure would have to do this. It would have, this oscillator would have to come down, stay above this green level of 40 on the stochastic or uh, 65 on the CCI, negative 65. See right now, and then they have to jet right back, they have to jet right back above here. So if this oscillator right now, if this oscillator would stay above this negative 65 or what's called 40 in the stochastic, so in the last 30 years, this was tested also on an AI program 
So let me know that negative 65 is an inflection point on an oscillator and 40. So 40 and 65, 65 positive or 40 stochastic or negative 65, positive 65. If it stays above this 65 and comes straight back above 100, a yellow bar is going to form and you'd have a failure trade, but you don't. So failure trades off the board. So I'm looking for a zone break. All right, so there's my three setups. The failure trade did not come through. So what's my next only setups available? Outer edge slingshot. It's going to close above it, close back, back inside of it. Or we get a zone break here. If we get a zone break, we're good to go. Now, let's take a look at this pocket that we have below us. We have a huge pocket below us. I'll mark a profile. Look at this pocket below us. Big, giant pocket below us. I already showed you yesterday how I can project these things way ahead of time. I projected it six hours before it even happened. Stop within one tick of my projection. And then it rallied hard. Well, right now, my projection today is 14 and three quarters. That's where the hole in the market is. That's where control point was one, two days ago. Control point, that's where the most volume was traded on my two to four hour rotating profiles. This is not a 30 minute market profile that rotates every 30 minutes. That is irrelevant. That will run through support and resistance like hot butter, you know, knife through like hot butter. It just, it, it's, it doesn't work very well. It doesn't work very well. All right. So we can use this information to look for what? Look for this zone break or this outer edge setup. If the market gets strong on us and gets back above 45, I will look for a failure trade back inside a profile, but I'm not. Now, what I'm releasing here is this algorithm right here called a what? This is called a SIM scalper. The NASDAQ is short right now. I have specific settings that I show you how to use a SIM scalper also with automated trading that we are releasing to members also. So this SIM scalper is going to go with a PDF for you. Um, this is great to use after news. It's great to use. Usually, I like to turn these things on. If you're doing the SIM scalper, turn it on three to five minutes after news. You, you don't need to trade the SIM scalper right now. There's your zone break. You don't need to trade the SIM scalper in, uh, right when news gets released. Now, I just had four targets, but if, if you had more targets on this, you'd still be short on the SIM scalper. But look at the zone break that I projected. I projected this before it even happened. Why? Because there's a hole in the market. That's not my opinion. My opinion is irrelevant. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Gerald. Don't listen. We're not, we do not project price action. We let the market tell us what it wants to do. We read the market. When I was a small order execution trader and I traded against institutions and Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs and all that stuff, we trade order flow, all right? It's the same concept in futures. You trade order flow. I projected this breakdown way before it happened. This algorithm, this SIM scalper projected this breakdown before it happened. I have it programmed to take this zone break. It's programmed to take this zone break, which it got short the NASDAQ, at 07. Right now it's at 61. All right? It fell 47 points. The algorithm. The SIM scalper called it, right? Why? How did I project this going down? Because there's a giant hole in the market. The hole is huge. There's no support. This is not there's thousands of indicators out there for free. Right? that are oscillators. Os oscillators are junk. They're worthless. They tell you nothing. You need to read where all the participants are in the market. All the participants in the market. Thank you, Peter Stoudemire. I don't take credit for this, right, for market profile. Nobody can take credit for this but Peter Stoudemire, one of the smartest minds out there who created this in 1985. I, have, I get credit for the, 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 rant, the time frame that I, I use for it because these two out of four hour profiles are awesome. They, they call these big pockets in the market, right? But thank you, Peter Stoudemire, because it, he just told us with his software, 
with back in 1985 that there's a huge hole in the market and there's zero support. None. None. Because this registers all the market participants. That's not my opinion. That's not your opinion. The market's telling us there's no support in the market. So what I designed is, over the years, in the culmination of when Gerald and I opened this room together a long time ago, it's been a process of trying to make things simple. It's been a process of trying to make it down into just a few setups. And we've done it. We've done it because now I can project exactly three setups in the market every single day. It's either going to be a zone break into an imbalanced market, it's going to be an outer edge setup, or this market is going to get strong, and it's going to go into a failure trade. And that's all there is to it. Because I know if I get below low value area here, like I projected this morning before this even broke this morning, it broke at 38 and three quarters. It's been as low as 31 so far. I know that I'm in a big hole in the market. That hole is huge. Now, I have these two zone breaks, right? Two big zone breaks. Can I take another zone break? Yes, off the smaller Rinko. As long as I stay weak on this oscillator, as long as this oscillator stays weak right here, below my 100, if my oscillator stays weak and it's pegged at negative right there, it's pegged right there, it's negative, below 100, I can take the next zone break on a smaller Renko size because it's pegged southbound the Greyhound. But what you, what you try to do, guys, is this. What you try to do, get on the original break and let the runner run. You can take this one right here because the oscillator is weak. Here's another great trade, right? 31 got as low as, what, 29 so far. Because the oscillator is weak, that's when you want to trade off the smaller Renko size. You want to trade off the smaller Renko size, right? That's how you trade non-farm payrolls today. Thanks for coming to work. We nailed... Non-farm payrolls happens every Friday, the first Friday of every single month. It's the most important news event for the exception of the Fed funds, or, or, the, or the Fed. It's the most, most volatile event. If you can trade this event, you can trade any event. So we're showing you how to trade the most volatile event you can possibly have if you can trade non-farm payrolls, you can trade CPI, PPI, GDP, retail sales, that happens every month, or a daily basis. All right? That's how we do it. The target on my target today for the runner is 53, 14 and 3 quarters, yesterday's profile. Okay? Good job, Sal. Who all got short the market? Let's take a look real quick. Sal, all three targets hit? Good job. Who else got it? Derek, I know you got it, man. You're always on top of it. Good job, man. Mulu, you got it? Good job. Aaron, you got it? Leo got it? Terrence, Terrence, you're on top of it? Absolutely love it. Success begets success, guys. Success begets success. Help each other out in the room. What I like about what Aaron does and Sal and some of these other traders and Derek and so on, they, they help each other out, right? Listen, there's a reason that counter trend traders lose money because they're going against order flow. When I was, I always tell traders this, when I was a guest speaker at the Las Vegas trade show in Las Vegas, over 6,000 traders, they all use oscillators that go against order flow. We don't want to do that, guys. We're smarter than that. We're more educated than that. We know that the counter trend traders are going to try to fade this move all the way down. Let them keep counter trend trading. Let them use divergence and the MAC and all these different oscillators. You know, let them use all these oscillators. Oscillators are great like this for confirmation. They're terrible for entry. Terrible unless you know where the participants are. Market profile is our participants. Nothing, pre and, and, and I can say this, I will compare this market profile to anybody's profile out there. I don't care if you're a hedge fund, prop firm. You know, we've had hedge funds, I said yesterday, approach us about our profile. So we actually, the, 
the individual that actually helped us uh, test the AI program. Her husband actually runs or is part of a, one of the top hedge funds out there also. They know our profile is good because it catches the wrongly positioned traders in the market. You're catching the wrongly positioned traders. That's what we do. Okay?